Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Edward Euler, the host of Heavy Cardboard, and for this month's Game of the Month, we're featuring a gem of a classic reef encounter by Richard Brees. Richard Brees is also famous for his key series of games as well. Now, with this being an older, call it a classic game, I can't in good conscience say that this is a true first impression because I've played the game a number of times previously. However, to my disappointment, it's been a number of years since I last played Reef Encounter. So think of this as a first impression after a long hiatus or a reminder as to why I really love this game. So we finished a four-player game last night with the four players that are going to stream it late, uh, later on this week on Friday, and I jotted down some notes. The first thing that came to mind is this is such a awesome confluence of mechanisms that flow so seamlessly together. You're going to be acquiring tiles or polyps or coral tiles, and then you're going to be laying those tiles out in the most opportune way for you to be able to harvest later on. However, you also want to be able to protect it from other predators, i.e. your other players. And not only that, but you could think of each of these coral colors or tiles that are out on the board and that are behind you and in front of your player screen, you can think of them as investments to some degree because each of those tiles is going to have an intrinsic value, just that value is going to fluctuate throughout the game. So almost you could think of it as a stock market game and each of these tiles is worth some value of points ranging from one to five points depending on where they end up throughout the game or at the end of the game I should say. So that value is going to be completely player driven and player dependent because it's going to be flip-flopping throughout the game and until players lock in that price or that strength or that dominance or that value of those dominance tie or of those coral tiles you don't know at any given time what it's going to be worth at the end of the game so when you're laying tiles say for instance i'm laying down pink tiles onto the board or pink coral and orange is more dominant over pink currently orange can eat or take over pink coral and I need to be careful that I'm not laying my tiles in such a way that either is near orange tiles or makes it enticing for other players to start building up an orange reef to then be able to eat up or possibly gobble up and, and, and take away my value while gaining their own value. So you need to keep that in mind while also trying to maximize your profit or your, your investment in these tiles. And I find that fascinating that this is such a thematically strong game with it being about a the ecosystem of a given reef, but also you could make the case that this is actually, like I said, a stock market investment game if you wanted to step away and just look at it from a mechanical standpoint. However, the theme is tied in so well to this game that it really does feel like an ecosystem underneath the waves, which I appreciate. That said, timing plays a massive part in this game when you do things. On a given turn, you have 10 options on what you can do on your turn. However, really, it comes down to acquiring tiles, trading out uh, algae tokens or... or, uh, or investment think of it that way you're trading out investments or coral tiles or laying tiles and that or harvesting tiles and you can do a mix of those things throughout a given round and throughout a given turn and you do all of these things on your turn and then in a four-player game you have to wait until three other players have taken their action before you it gets back to you and you can then reap the rewards of what you hopefully set up on your turn because you can only harvest or eat coral, which is scoring points, at the very first thing on your turn. So when you set yourself up, you need to set yourself up in such a way that's protected enough to where it's going to survive everybody else's actions before it gets back to you so that you then can hopefully score some amount of points. And that timing in which you do things really has a huge impact in this game. And you can make a case that timing 
this is, even though it has aspects that tile lane and the area control aspects of it, timing is the single most important thing in this game. And you also have to take advantage of opportunities that other players offer to you, whether they offered it to you on purpose or not. And so this game has a fairly significant in-your-face aspect, not that it's antagonistic, but it very much has a feel of, oh, you left this available, I'm going to maximize that, so I'm going to eat those tiles or I'm going to take over part of your coral reef. And so you need to be aware of that. I don't mind that in my games. Some folks might not uh, be too terribly keen that you're very much not in your own sandbox here. It is, it is highly interactive and highly, not take that, but your shortcomings or the opportunities that you leave me, I need to maximize because, again, I only get one in four turns. So when somebody leaves me that opportunity, I have to maximize it because scores are not terribly high. This is not going to be a game that scores in the hundreds of points. So every little tug of war, every little give and take that you can take and not be on the giving side is a benefit to you and a can be a significant advantage and a significant pull and gain for you. So you need to maximize that where it's available. You just need to be aware that it's, it's going to come at the cost of someone else. But the game is such that unless you were continually making massive mistakes, it's not just going to be people picking on me. They're going to be taking advantages from all the other players to where it almost self-balances unless somebody is playing such a perfect game, but it's a game of imperfect information, so that's unlikely to happen. So it balances itself so one player doesn't necessarily feel completely picked on. That said... It's a bit of a bear to teach. However, the game itself is really intuitive once you get going. It's just trying to lower that barrier to entry, which is something I'm going to try and do when we stream this on Friday. All that kind of a good way to wrap this up in a bow. Think of it that way is Prism of Everything over on BGG summed this up, in my opinion, perfectly. And they said... Apparently, Richard Breeze got the idea for this game while watching Blue Planet on coral reefs. It has parrotfish and shrimp and algae and coral varieties and shifting dominance relationships to one that or to one another that vie for territorial dominance by eating each other. This game has one of the strangest dynamics of ebb and flow that actually feels like some bizarre underwater ecosystem. And I think that pretty much nails it. That's exactly what Reef Encounter is. So if you have it and you haven't played it, I highly recommend checking out the game. And if you haven't, then I would recommend checking out our live stream this Friday. See what the game is about and see if it's something that interests you and your group. And if so, maybe hunting down a copy. So again, I'm Edward Euler from Heavy Cardboard, and I hope to see you guys on Friday. Take care, everybody.